if you want to be able to see sunspots and watch solar eclipses safely, but don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a real telescope equipped with an expensive hydrogen alpha filter, you're really limited to just two devices, the sunspotter and the solar scope. This video will present the pros and cons of each device. The Sunspotter averages around $500, but it pays to shop around because prices vary depending on the source. Also, if you know someone who's a teacher, there are education supply stores which will sell this for as little as $325 to a verified teacher. The Solar Scope is only $125, so if budget is your primary uh, uh, requisite, this is probably the way to go. The main reason the Sunspotter is so much more expensive than the Solar Scope is that it's made out of very high quality plywood, attractively finished, and it comes completely assembled. The Solar Scope is made out of cardboard, it's good quality cardboard, but cardboard nonetheless. It takes about 20 minutes to assemble, and I found it uh, rather frustrating because the instructions are not as clear as I would have liked. Also, you're going to be handling lenses and inside a mirror and it's very easy to get fingerprints on them which isn't good for the image. To use the sun spotter you move the carriage back and forth and the telescope up and down until the shadow of the sun cast by this pin disappears. It means it's concentric with the pin. When you're at that point you should see the image of the sun located in the center of the uh, platform. You need to put a piece of white paper here. I recommend uh, matte paper, not glossy. To focus the image of the sun, you have to reach in and turn a threaded barrel that holds a lens right here. And this creates a problem because it's impossible to do this without blocking the image of the sun. So you're trying to, fo you have to focus, take your hand away, focus, take your hand away. It's very awkward. The solar scope is aligned in much the same way. You move the base back and forth and rotate, rotate the telescope. This time, instead of a dedicated pin though, what you do is look at the shadow of the first uh, lens on the, uh, the flat surface here, and when it's concentric, when the shadow is concentric with the lens, you know you're pointed at the sun. Another difference is the position of the image. The light comes down through the lens, hits a convex mirror in, this, in a focuser right here, and then is projected up onto this flat white surface. What's nice about this is that you can focus by turning a, a knurled knob inside, which you can't see, very easily, and you don't, you're not blocking the image of the sun, so you can get a very sharp focus. Also, the focuser turns very smoothly, very easily, whereas on the sun spotter, the uh, threaded barrel was extremely difficult to turn. On the left, we have the sun spotter, and on the right, the solar scope. These images have been resized to accommodate the screen. In actuality, the Sunspotter produces a disk that's two and three quarter inches in diameter, whereas the Solar Scope is slightly larger at three and a half inches. Also, because the Solar Scope projects its image off axis, it has an oblong or slightly football shape. These images were taken on, taken on the 20th of January 2017 and show sunspots 2625 and 2626. If these aren't too impressive, it's because we happen to be at the minimum of a solar cycle and probably won't be seeing a lot of really good sunspots for two to three years. What this image shows is that although it's much cheaper, the images, that is the darkness and sharpness of the sunspots in the uh, solar scope are actually better than in the much more expensive sunspotter. And I've observed this on many times. In fact, 2626 is a double sunspot. Although you can't see it in these images, there's a second very small one just off to the side here. You, I've never been able to see it in the sunspotter 
but on occasions of good seeing, I have spotted it in the solar scope. So, to my eye, I think the images from the solar scope are actually better than the sun spotter, even though it's much cheaper. Assuming cost isn't an issue, the better scope may depend on how it's being used. For example, if you're dealing with large groups of children, I think the sun spotter has a clear advantage. It can be viewed from both sides, which allows more people to see the image at one time. Uh, and it's also a lot safer. With the solar scope, you're looking basically in the direction of the sun. And with small children, there's always going to be a temptation to look up over the edge directly into the sun. With this, you don't have that problem. On the other hand, the images in here are not quite as sharp as with the solar scope. Young children won't be bothered by that as much, but if you're showing this to adults, they might be a little disappointed. Another nice feature of the sun spotter is that it's very comfortable to look at the object. When the sun is high in the sky and you're trying to use the solar scope, you're having to get way down below it to look up, and this can be very awkward and uncomfortable. But if you're looking for something to use uh, just for yourself or an individual, this has a couple of clear advantages. First of all, the images, I think, are sharper. Uh, but second of all, and more importantly, you can stick your face well inside of the cardboard box so that peripheral light can't get in at you. And this increases the contrast, uh, the focus you can put on the ob on the image and I think this really looks a lot better. Also, because the sun spotter has slightly lower magnification, uh, the image of the sun doesn't track out of view as quickly as it does with the higher powered solar scope. So, I hope you found this uh, little review helpful and if you get one of these devices, I hope you have a lot of fun using it. Thank you for watching.